Hello. Welcome to my combo lords joining me here. It is quite dark. I don't know if you can even tell that we are within the combo classroom, but we are. Tonight I'm doing a stream at night, partially because it's been, you know, a few days since I checked in on this channel, and I realized, oh, it's the last day of September. You got that glitch in the calendar system that the rhyme tells you about. 30 days has September, blah, blah, blah. A lot of rhymes that can get easily mixed up because a lot of months end in ember, and then the rest have 31. So it's, whoa, it's about to hit what I will call for this month, Clocktober, because, you know, we got all of our clocks and maybe we have even more clock math to talk about, so we're about to hit Clocktober. In any case, thank you for joining me tonight in the Combo Classroom, where we're going to do a stream for a topic that I hinted at a while, that it's a side topic to some people. For those who care more about the mathematics, you should make sure to know, for anyone, you should make sure to know I did just drop on my main Combo Class channel a new episode about point infinite nines and if, when, or how it equals one. And even if you think that you are sure that it does or doesn't, there is misconceptions on both sides of the aisle. So please watch the episode and or leave a comment on your thoughts about it there. Um, that one is a brand new full combo class. The ones on that channel are my you know, top-notch, fully edited, carefully prepped and planned projects on the live streams like this. Sometimes I enjoy doing some random side topics because I have many interests in life and this channel is an opportunity to teach. And there are many things I would love to teach you folks. And those include not just math, but for example, other streams could encounter things about comedy and humor or things about philosophy, or things about nature, or maybe survival in the world. But today's will be on the topic of food. Now, for those who don't care about that, we will also be chatting about a variety of fun topics in and around the food. But if you really don't care, if anyone leaves early, make sure you check out the episode linked in the description. That's a full episode about point infinite nines I just dropped. Now. Today's thing about food has two parts. There's a main part, and then there's a sort of desserty part. I'll give a clue about the desserty part before we jump into the main part, which is, you know I like when I can find a rare fruit at the store. Now, there's a really good produce market that I go shopping at that they have a lot of cool fruits and they have different ones in different seasons so at different times you'll find for one which ones are even available and for two which ones are cheap enough for me to purchase i like to have a low budget now today's food probably cost me a total including this dessert of maybe ten dollars maybe slightly more because this dessert item is a rare fruit but Still, you know, in my area in Berkeley, California, unfortunately, food is way overpriced. And so if you eat out, even if you get fast food, it's going to cost you probably 10 bucks. And if you get a decent meal, it's probably going to cost you 15 bucks, even if you're trying to go cheap, if you eat out here. Pretty wild for people who live in other places. Money is all relative. So to some people, a $4 burger is too much. And for some people, that's too little, you know. But in any case, I, based on my income and where I live, I have to look out for the cheap rare fruits when the rare fruits are in stock at a cheap enough price. And sometimes you'll get these rare fruits that I always see there that are always above the price tier I'm currently willing to pay for a fruit. And that includes one called dragon fruit, among many others that are these higher priced fruits for whatever reason, most likely because they don't grow as well in this climate. So you have to grow them really far and ship them. Now, turned out when I walked into that store today to get some groceries for myself, but also as I was in the store concocting in my mind that I might do a cooking stream. Well, 
I saw a random particularly good deal on dragon fruit. It, it happened to be on sale for a really cheap price. They must have gotten a large shipment of it or something. So for once, I was like, huh, the dragon fruit is affordable today. That's weird. Let's get one. Now, I don't know who has tried the dragon fruit. I've tried these once or twice in my life. Uh, and it's been a while since I've tried one. This one is called a white dragon fruit. Obviously, you'll say the outside's not white. It's referring to the inside. Most dragon fruits on the outside will be a red, greenish, spiky, cool thing. And on the inside could have different colors. So this one will be white on the inside with probably little black specks because they usually have seeds. The seeds are edible, so we'll eat the specks. Now, dragon fruit. We didn't have a chance to buy this in my usual shopping for fun rare fruits recently because it was always overpriced. But for some reason, they had a sale on white dragon fruit today. And so we got one. So we got a white dragon fruit to try for our dessert. But mostly our cooking stream is going to actually involve cooking things because I'm not a dragon fruit expert. I'm going to need to just be trying it for like the second or third time ever. However, there are many things that I cook that I would love to teach you folks about. Some days it will be tutorials even about I would like to do how to eat for cheap. Because trust me, I eat for cheap some days. I, I'm fine eating a can of tuna. I'm fine eating a sandwich that's just bread and meat only. Or in a piece of lettuce. Um, I'm okay eating cheap stuff. Like if you want to eat cheap, we can do how to cook beans tutorial. How to make good noodles. How to... Chicken can be cheap. There's a lot of certain vegetables. But today's isn't as much on the cheap end, but it still is cheaper than eating out. And it's going to be so much fancier than what you could get for eating out for this price. The meal I'm about to cook today would, in my area, you know, cost more than $20 if you tried to get it when you were eating out. And it's going to cost us, not counting the dragon fruit, less than $10 for sure for the whole meal, probably seven or eight bucks. That's even on the fancier end for ingredients. And that's because another thing that was on a mild discount, uh, enough of a discount that I decided to splurge on it, is a form of meat. We're also cooking vegetables as well as fungi. So if you're a vegetarian, know first off that I've been a vegetarian before. There were uh, about five to six years when I was about um, 10, about 9 to 15 or so when I was vegetarian. And so uh, I get it. I'm sorry to any vegetarians. You're going to have to bear with certain parts of the cooking tutorial because one thing that I have learned to cook weirdly well, and I figured I need to share the weirdly good skills of cooking this with you folks, because whenever somebody eats my version of it, they're like, this is better than I'm used to. And I'm like, why? I, it, it doesn't take me that long. It's not that crazy complex. Why doesn't other people know how to do it? Is steak. So I got a discount, small steak, and we were going to cook uh, a couple little pieces of steak and do the Dumotro how to cook steak tutorial. Other things we have are asparagus or plural. Perhaps we should call them asparagi. We have mushrooms. And typically, if I made a full meal that I wasn't, you know, trying to also stream during, I would probably add a carb. I'm not sure if we'll do that today, but typically if I was making this as a full meal, I would make a noodle or something or a rice or something along with that. But uh, we might skip that for the stream and just go for meat, vegetables and fruit and the and I guess fungi because um, mushrooms, although I usually categorize them with the vegetables are technically not a vegetable. They are technically a separate thing, a fungus. Now, let me take a peek at our comments before we move indoors. So a lot of fun, cool chatting. And thank you all for joining me. And yeah, people are talking about uh, various prices and different stuff about a lot of places you get less money working and then you it costs less money for the food or vice versa. So there's but there's better or worse ratios 
of how much you typically make in a job to how much it costs to live somewhere slash eat food and stuff, which is mixed with rent and things like that. So like where I live, there's like a pretty high minimum wage, but that doesn't over, it's still a bad ratio where I live for the amount the minimum wage is higher versus the amount the food's higher. So, however, if you really know how to look and you cook it yourself, you can make cheap food. I could eat here even in the uh, expensive area. If I really was desperate, I could eat for less than $10 a day, uh, but I would have to be very careful about, you know, buying a lot of beans and rice and stuff. Now, people are asking me to say their name. I don't want to make that a habit. I'm going to do it one time because whatever. Uh, shout out Raj. But I'm not going to do the whole name. I, I don't want to make that a tradition that people beg for shout outs. So we'll do half the name. Shout out to Raj. But um, thank you all for joining me, though. And I would like to hear your thoughts on... Uh, some thoughts you could share in the comments include, what do you like to cook? If you don't like to cook, uh, why do you hate it or what could get you to like it? And are there any foods that you think are underrated or overrated? Now, people say cooking takes a lot of time. Now, that can be true. There are types of food you can cook easy, so it doesn't always take time. Uh, there are there's types of food, like if you need to eat quick, there's ways that you could buy prepackaged type foods that cost more than raw ingredients, but still less than eating out and then make a really quick sandwich or something. So there's ways if you really needed to go like halfway, like buy like prepackaged stuff that's you make yourself, but isn't like raw ingredients. And that will be halfway in price too, probably. Now, as far as cooking sometimes taking time, I see it as a meditative activity. I like double tasking with things. I like, you know, if I'm watching a YouTube video, I usually have it on half my screen. The other half might be on some notes I'm taking about a book or might be on a Wikipedia article or something. And I like multitasking. So I like half cooking and paying attention to the cook. Well, today it will be multitasking because I'm going to have to chat with the stream and pay triple tasking. I got to, you know, be a good host and deal with the technology, like the camera angle pointing the right way and the audio working and stuff. And then I got to cook. But uh, even when I'm cooking on my own, I usually multitask. You can listen to uh, music or a podcast when you're doing it. Sometimes I will think about a book I'm working on or think about an episode I'm brainstorming. So it's meditative and I do multitask while I'm doing it. But even if you don't once in a while, if I need to space out, if you're going to space out, there's some activities that I consider meditation that when you meditate, it involves focusing purely on a singular thing and reducing exterior thoughts under one definition of it. And so to meditate, you don't need to eliminate everything you can under many descriptions of meditation, eliminate almost everything, but focus on one or two things. And so, for example, nature, you can focus on just thinking about the trees right now, or you can think about, I'm just petting this cat right now. Those are meditative activities to me, as well as cooking. I'm focusing on the food. And you do, if you want to make easy food, you can. But if you want to make your food really good, you do got to give it some love and care. You got to you got to care for that food and love it and think about it and every angle of that thing. Like you see, when we cook the steak, for example, we're going to have tongs instead of a spatula because we're not just going to be flipping it. We're going to be thinking with tongs about what part of it needs to touch at what time. So we're going to we got to give it some love and care if we want it to be some top notch food. But you don't need all your meals to be top notch. Like the way I'm going to cook today is the way I eat maybe once a week or something at most. Like uh, this is a, a fancy meal for me, even though the ingredients don't cost that much because sometimes they go even cheaper, you know. 
sometimes I do. I have been cooking this for my family sometimes. Um, I've been into recently cooking steak and vegetables, but it's it's not the cheapest. A lot of days I will go on even a smaller food budget where I'm eating, you know, cans of tuna and bread and stuff. But with that said, uh, today it's still, even though it's a fancy meal for me, it's cheaper for this fancy, fancy meal I'm about to cook than it would be to eat out for a cheap thing to eat out. It's, this is going to be cheaper than, or like we can, what it will be the same cost as it would be the same cost as like a McDonald's burger and fries. So like it's, it's going to be a lot better than that. Now, okay. Sometimes you're in the mood for fast food, but in, you know, unless you happen to be in a hyper greasy mood, we're about to cook something better than that. Now, all right. Now, we're going to move inside in a moment. So, we're going to go inside. Um, so, my most of my family's not around. Random people might pass through in the background. I'm not positive. My brother's around. He might have some friends around. So, we'll see. Uh, maybe he'll even want to make a cameo if uh, I have extra steak, which I will. I'm going to cook slightly more steak than I need in case my brother wants any. And we are going to move inside. Let me check the indoor region, but I'll transport us. So let's take a little field trip. And when we're inside, some other good news is we're going to be in the living room. And sometimes in the living room hanging out is some of my magnificent cats. Like um, earlier before I started the stream, I did see Dandelion. All right. Um, so let's see. I don't want you folks to see the addresses. Okay. Um, let me go inside briefly and make sure that um, I'm ready to fire up that pan and stuff. And then we're going to do a little cooking tutorial. I know it's a little different for our channel, but it's going to be quite fun because I have, um, I think not only will you learn some fun things from it, but it can be a meditative activity to see different forms of food cooking. And we're not going to do like a whole mukbang eating it or whatever. Once it's fully cooked, we'll wrap up the stream not too long after that. But, but I'll show you me trying it briefly. And we will also get to the dragon fruit, which this will be more of our dessert, which we'll get to near the end. So... Until dragon fruit time, let me run inside, make sure everything is good to go, and then we will go and grab our ingredients and a nice hot pan and everything. All right.
All right, folks. So we're going to first work on some spices. Now, spices are pretty important. We don't need to get crazy fancy with the spices. There are about four to five spices that I consider utterly crucial. And so we are going to take the crucial spices and make a little blend. We are also going to do something particular to the meat. Now, we're just going to salt the meat to start because sometimes I think the spices get in the way of it creating a nice sear and getting a nice crust when it hits that hot pan. So we're going to focus on salting the steak, but also making a little thing to throw on the steak toward the later portion of its cooking, as well as maybe save some for the vegetables. This mix is going to use our crucial spices. Now, what are what I consider the most crucial? Of course, there is salt. Salt is, you know, a classic. Humans are not only very addicted to salt, but humans also need iodine to a degree. If you if you only have no salt in your diet or non-iodized salt, you have to actually make sure you're eating the right foods that contain iodine. So not to encourage Americans or anything to eat more salt. You get enough in your diet. But if you had none, you actually need to make sure that you get iodine, which is now added to table salt of many sorts. In any case, to make a spice blend, we're not only going to need salt, but we're going to need its classic friend, pepper. Now, black pepper is just a classic spice. It adds a mild amount of kick. Even people who hate, that's a good amount of pepper. Um, that's okay. Peppers will add a little more salt to balance it, and we'll save some of this for the vegetables as well. Now, pepper is good because I like a little bit of kick, a little bit of spice, but people who don't like a strong spice will still handle some little black pepper in the mix. It adds a certain type of tangy side type of kick, a little different than the other type of spice that we are gonna throw a bit in, which is gonna be cayenne. Now, cayenne pepper is one of the classic hotter things that if you wanna heat up a dish, cayenne is the simplest classic for that. Now, it's actually very hot, so you need less than you think. We're gonna put just a little tiny dab of it in there because even that amount of cayenne will make this mix have a bit of kick to it. Now, as people have requested that I do a hot pepper eating challenge. Yes, I will do something like that sometime because you know I like weird eating challenges. I'm not, I like mild amounts of spice a lot, but I'm not good at dealing with a large amount of spice, but I do like challenges, so we will do it sometime. Um, when we get, okay. Yeah, when we get to, definitely by the time we get to a million subscribers, maybe when we hit 200,000 or something, we'll eat something really hot. For now, we're making a good spice blend. And what you need to add next is, this is uh, such an underrated one if you're not gonna use a fresh version of this. I mean, okay, no, I can't call it underrated. Everyone knows this is good, but it's so highly praised in society that it is properly rated. It's garlic. Garlic is just a great flavor. Now, we're gonna put garlic powder in because I'm not chopping any fresh garlic today. Um, I have a head of garlic, but it would take a while to chop that and prep that and everything. Now, we're just gonna put a little bit of garlic powder for now in our spice mix. And I'm gonna put a decent amount of that because the garlic powder really adds a nice flavor. Now, finally, this is the least crucial of my crucial spices. If I had to pick my desert island spices, those would be my four. But my fifth here, I'm going to say that onion powder also adds a very nice thing if you are not cooking with onions in your mix. Onions and garlic are really good to cook with. If we do a longer cooking tutorial, I will certainly cook onions and garlic earlier. You have to cook them before the other stuff and we'll make those part of the flavor. But for now, if we're not cooking fresh onions, I will say that a little bit of onion powder does help out a good amount and makes that flavor have some extra. Now, 
Here's a little spice blend that we are gonna throw on top of the meat, and if we have any extra, we'll throw on top of the um, vegetables as we cook those. To make the meat start, we are going to soak it in some salt. And if you want to salt something like a steak, you can do it in advance. There's some pros to doing it almost half an hour early or so and letting it seep in a bit, but it'll work to do right before as well. And you want to put more salt than you realize. This is maybe partially because the flavor burns off a bit from it or whatever, and you don't taste it as much as you think. And maybe partially because restaurant foods have more salt and butter than you realize. And if you want your food to taste like a restaurant, you kind of got to use a silly amount of salt and butter. But in either case, whether or not we want to, you know, have too much salt in your diet, which some people have to avoid, um, we're going to put a decent amount of salt in these, which we are going to pat in. Now, I have now dedicated, this is an important cooking thing, this is raw meat, so you don't want this to touch the other things unless, I, I don't want this to touch anything unless I know the thing is either going to be washed or cooked heavily. So like if this touches a vegetable that I know I'm going to fry the vegetable a long time, that's okay. But if this touches anything I would eat raw, bad news because although butchers are careful these days, there's certainly a chance that this would lead you to, you know, have some sort of bacteria or uh, what are the things that live in here? I guess they're bacteria more likelihood of a bacteria getting you or whatever. Now, butchers are pretty clean these days. And so we can definitely, if you really needed to, if I ate these raw, I there would not be a guarantee I would even get sick at all, but it's a risk, you know. You gotta cook them to a decent temperature if you don't want the risk. Now, when we cook these babies, we are, oh, I forgot, I should be salting while I'm talking. When we cook these babies, um, we're going to aim for a medium rare, but it's always different. I'm still, um, I don't have like a meat thermometer I use or anything, and I've gotten pretty good at hitting the right temperature. I think you guys will be proud of whatever steaks I'm able to whip up, but it's, um, we're gonna, you know, hit somewhere from medium to rare We'll aim for medium rare, but I don't have a meat thermometer or anything of the sort that you might use if you were going to be extra official on it. Oh, my point with the cleanliness is that I've basically dedicated this hand as my meat touching hand. You'll notice that I'm only touching it with one hand. And so I'm this hand, if I were to touch, if I wanted to touch the salt shaker with this hand, I'd have to wash it my hand first or wash the salt shaker after. So you gotta be careful when you're mixing, like this is my meat touching hand until I wash it. And this is my uh, allowed to touch the salt shaker and stuff hand. Now we're just adding a good amount of salt to these because it does really help them in the process. And now we're going to heat up the pan quite hot. We actually, let's first throw on some vegetables and then we'll get the steaks frying. To throw on some vegetables, we are going to, these are some vegetables we will be cooking. Normally, there are a few ways to make these. We can cook them in the oven with a little bit of oil on them, like olive oil, and bake them. And that's a quite simple way. You can steam them, which you have to be careful to make them not too bland or too soft if you do them that way. If you do like a double boiler with a steamer pot on top or something. Uh, we're going to do between steaming and pan frying, which is... I like to put a small amount of water in a pan with them, then they steam with it, and as the water boils off, then I maybe add a little butter or olive oil or something to then let them cook a little bit in that now that the water has helped their centers get soft. We're gonna add even less water than usual because I'm gonna cook these mushrooms with them. And you see, uh, and let me, while I'm doing this with my not meat hand, I'm going to break off these stems. I'm going to save them in case I want to throw them in a soup or something later. Stems like this can be useful to throw into a soup if you don't know what else to do with them. Might even throw them into like scrambled eggs or something, chop them up. But they're not going to be as easy to cook in this format of what we're doing today. So we'll save those to see if I have a use for them later. 
For now, we mostly want the caps. And the mushrooms leak a little bit of water. Mushrooms sort of are secretly wet. It's funny. You don't think of mushrooms as wet, but when you cook them, a lot of water is expelled. And so the mushrooms are going to leak a little water that's going to almost steam the asparagus a bit. And so we're going to put a tiny amount of water, throw these in, and let me chop these. Let me wash this hand so I can chop them, actually. Um, we're going to get the meat hand, no meat hand. So we're gonna chop um, these things. I did already with these asparagus. I already uh, chopped a little bit off the ends of them. You sometimes want to do that. Sometimes the ends of asparagus are a little tough to eat and stuff. So with this um, batch I got, I already chopped a tiny bit off the end before the stream. Now with the mushrooms, we are going to cut them a bit and then they're going to expel a little water. So we'll put them with just a tiny amount of water and these, and then we're going to let them sort of steam a tiny bit. The water will boil off and then we are going to add some sort of oils. Like probably, we'll just go with some butter probably. If you want to be extra healthy, you can use some sort of olive oils and such as well. Now, technically, if you want to be really good at your cooking, which this is a little beyond the level I'm at, we might want to use oils that have a particular smoke point because if you cook with different oils, some of them are better to cook at lower temperatures versus higher temperatures. Like, Butter is less good to cook at a super high temperature because it'll sort of burn. But even though we're going to be doing that to a degree with the steak, I'm going to throw a little butter on them and it's going to be on a hot flame. Normally, if you want to do a really hot temperature, you might look at an oil with a really high smoke point so that it doesn't burn as easily. And that might be something like avocado oil or something, alternate ones. However... You know, that's a little beyond the point I'm at right now. Maybe I'll study that someday. Right now, I typically use either olive oil or butter. And sometimes I use peanut oil, which is for a slightly different flavor. And I've occasionally used avocado oil. And I don't know. There's others out there if I were to do extra research. Now, here are some vegetables we are going to make. And somebody asked what kind of mushrooms they are. I don't know. They were just sold as brown mushrooms. So they just sold as brown mushrooms that came in different sizes. And so uh, they are some interesting type. Mushrooms took me a long time to learn to like. I actually was a hater of mushrooms. I may have inherited it genetically because my dad still hates mushrooms. He cannot, he cannot, like he wants to try to like them, but he can't. And it's something about the texture, perhaps. But if you compare the texture to other things that I've enjoyed, like maybe seafood or such, you or jello almost, and you, you try and change your mindset, the texture is actually really good. And mushrooms actually are almost like a meat substitute, almost a tofu-esque thing that it has a very meaty flavor and even texture if you do it a certain way. Now, to learn to like mushrooms, I had to eat them really, really cooked. I didn't like them at all when other people cooked them because they were undercooked, and I still would not enjoy eating this raw or just, like, slightly cooked. I like them, like, pretty well cooked. And I even had to learn to like them by having them almost burnt to a crisp. I would first cut them, like, so thin that when you fry them in a pan, if you leave them there for more than a minute, they will get practically burnt to a crisp and then I actually enjoyed them. I was like, there's something cool about this flavor and kind of texture that I made them less burnt to a crisp over some months and I learned to like them, but not when they're just barely cooked. I only like them when they're more cooked. I remember one time I went to someone's house for dinner and they cooked this giant mushroom that was not that cooked and 
it was so hard to try and eat enough of it to be polite. <laughs> I was like, I can not eat this that much of this and like be fine. I'll eat later, but I want to be polite and eat some of the food they prepared. And oh my God, it was hard to eat enough of that giant mushroom. So <laughs> um, let me take a look at our comments. We got some good ones. We have somebody who mentioned their friend almost died because of a raw steak. Yes, do be quite careful. When I said that butchers are typically careful and that I wouldn't necessarily get sick if I ate this, that does not mean you should eat it. It's a very high risk. When I say not necessarily, I mean like if I ate this raw, there's like a 50-50 chance I would get some degree of sick. And so um, don't uh, mess around with raw meat. You know, I washed, remember I kept one hand as the only one that touched it and then I washed it. Now, from now on, I don't even think I'm going to touch it and I even know what plate it's on because we're not going to like put anything raw we're going to eat on that plate. Now, let's see. Somebody said I should put some with salt on these things like their meat. We're going to add salt as they cook. I'm not going to salt them in advance. I would do that if we were going to oven fry them. I would probably rub them in olive oil and salt and pepper if we we're going to put them in the oven. However, we're going to put them in the pan. So I'm just going to let them go. And in the pan with the vegetables, they're so spread out that I can sort of add a little bit of spice here and there and stir it around and it gets evenly amalgamated and such. Now... What we got to start with is conducting a little, um, oop, set up our asparagus and mushroom pan. Now we are going to do this in two cast iron pans here. And a cast iron pan is a really good thing to have. You, you don't necessarily need two like my family happens to have, but instead of having a bunch of really bad pans, you want one or two good pans. And uh, cast iron pans are really good. There's all these myths about you're not allowed to ever wash it with soap or whatever. That's not true. Some of those myths were actually formed from back in the day when soaps were heavier. They contained lye and stuff. And so soaps would uh, actually mess up the pan if you did it too much. Now people are like, you got to let the seasoning cook in or whatever. It's still a better pan, even if you wash it with soap and water. It's, uh, you still even get the seasoning if you have it seasoned and then you, only, you don't wash it like crazy. Like I'm not going to soak this thing in water for too long, but it, it's okay to wash them. And a good cast iron pan really can just like do the trick. Some people like a pan that's like, oh, it has to be guaranteed to be nonstick. Those things do not cook stuff as well, and I'm also a little sketched out about the nonstick material on them, because like sometimes you'll use a spatula on like a nonstick pan, and it seems like it's like peeling something off or something. So in any case, these are not like a nonstick pan or whatever, but they cook it way better than that. So what we're gonna do is start with the one over here, and the one over here we don't need to see as well on the camera. Don't worry because. It's not as exciting as the steaks. We're putting it on a low flame and we're adding a, even this tiny splash of water. And the reason I'm adding a little splash of water is because the asparagus is going to sort of half steam. And like I said, I would even sometimes add more water if I wasn't putting the mushrooms in. But mushrooms expel a little bit of water. So... Some people would put the mushrooms in after. I like mushrooms pretty well cooked, so I'm gonna put them in now. They're kind of clogging up the pan. That's okay because we're not really looking to sear them or whatever. They don't need that much pan space. And we are also going to put a lid on it because a lid gets you sort of more interior warmth. You want a lid more often if you're going to want the inside of the food further cooked compared to the outside having like a good crispy layer or whatever. These we want to make sure like the inside of the asparagus gets cooked and stuff. And I like the mushrooms decently cooked as well. So the lid is going to make sure they get sort of soft enough. And it will prevent some water from escaping because 
as the water evaporates, it's going to collect on the lid and re-go back down, as opposed to if I don't have a lid, the water escapes more. So sometimes I'll use the lid and then notice at a point that I need to remove it because water hasn't been leaving in enough of a cycle and I need more water to escape. But for now, the lid will help us out. I have that on a low flame right now. And we are gonna get this pan just cranking hot. And as this pan is just gonna start blasting with heat, we actually are gonna have to give it like three or four minutes because we want it to be fully, evenly hot all the way throughout. And then we're gonna flop those steaks on there. All right, so let me get all these spices and stuff over, make sure we'll be ready for this pan being cranking hot. Dandelions in here. I didn't even notice that dandelion is hanging out in one of the chairs. So, one second. We'll go back to the pan in one second. Dandelion. Can I say hi? Little, little dandelion. That's a dandelion. That is my little angel. Is that a little angel? Yeah. Can you guys see Dandelion? There's a Dandelion. There's a good boy. Okay, I'll come back and fight you more later during the tour. Okay. I'm going to even give this pan one second longer, but we are going to stir around the vegetables a bit. Just to make sure that they're doing a good thing. Looks like it's the right enough amount. I'm going to add a little more water to the pan, actually. Okay, now dandelion's up. Now, I woke him up. He wants pads. Okay. He's gonna be a little monster for pets now. All right, one second. We're gonna give one second. All right, Dandelion is just a little monster for pets. I shouldn't have given him that little preview session of pets because now he's just going to be bugging for pets for the next 10 hours. So we're going to pet Dandelion while I make sure they have hands hot enough because he's a little angel. My cats are so well trained that they come when you call them. And you know how cats are like when you scruff them? Or some cats do, some don't but it reminds them of some genetic impulse from their mothering or whatever. And he likes, like my cats, when you scruff them and you can even move him a little bit and he'll walk along with the scruff and he's such a good happy boy. That's such a good happy dandelion. Oh. So, we're gonna have to throw these steaks on dandelion. We can't fetch you all stream because I know dandelion would go for an infinite amount of pets. He would he would be down for like a 10 hour stream where I'm petting him all stream. So <laughs> if anyone needs a dandelion stream, we're not gonna do the 10 hour stream today, but comment if you want a 10 hour dandelion stream. We probably won't make it 10 hours, but he would like literally be down for that. So, <laughs> all right, dandelion, I gotta put these steaks on. Okay, now, what I'm gonna do, not everyone will agree with this phase. Um, actually, no. Um, mm. See, sometimes I debate whether I wanna put any oil on first, but I'm just gonna put the steaks on for now. 
We're not going to add any oil yet, and then we're going to add some butter on in a bit to them. So, I'm taking a look at the time. Typically on a steak of this thickness, these are, you know, a couple centimeters, I don't know exactly. But you're going to want about four or five minutes, you'll hear on each side. But here's the thing. People don't give enough time. They say per side. They mean like the, like the flat sides of it. They don't give enough time to the side sides. You have to, as they're going, if you want this to be an epically good one, give some time to the sides. Like a good amount of time for that side to get a good crispy layer on the side. Now, a lot of things you'll hear say, never touch your stick. Flip it only once. Do not touch it. You're going to lose all the juice or something. That's a little overstated. You don't want to over touch the steak, but if you flip it around a little bit, you're not losing much juice. So flipping it around a little bit can actually be a good way to ensure that you have a good amount of crust on the different portions. Like here, I got that to have a nice little like more seared layer on that side already, which we'll give a little more to as we continue. And we have to be conscious about giving them a similar amount per steak if we're leaving them on the pan a similar amount of time. Because as I'm cooking the sides of this one, it's not getting as much interior cooking on other parts of it. So once I flop this down, we'll do a similar thing to the other one. Now, sometimes it even sits there and just hangs out there and does its own thing. Not always. Now, tongs over spatula really help you get this good movement on them. That can be helpful. Now, in a moment, I'm going to add some seasonings. There's one seasoning I didn't mention that I think I still have some of that I'm going to need to check in a second, which is I sometimes add a little bit of lime, or if I don't have that, lemon. Just the smallest little drops of lime or lemon on it near the end of the cooking process give it a really good vibe. Now, if you want the most classic, simple steak that just tastes like the pure classic steak, you're just going to want meat, salt, and pepper. However, we're putting in, you know, garlic powder, onion powder, cayenne, butter, and maybe lemon. And I think all those things do make a good steak if you don't overdo them. You want it to mostly taste like meat, salt, and pepper. But we want a little kick of a few other flavors. So now we've like sort of gotten a good like side layer, if you can see. Like this side is starting to get a good little crisp. And so now we know that we're not too worried about any imbalance where part of it is like that and not the rest. Now, as we go forward, I'm going to now sprinkle a little bit of this on it. This is the seasoning powder that had a little bit of salt, but mostly was like our garlic powder and such. I'm even going to now make sure I get a little bit of that seasoning powder on each little crevice of these. So as I go to the other side, we're going to put a little on the sides, a little bit on that side, and we're going to let it go back. And rub it in a tiny bit lightly. Now, this seasoning powder, you sometimes want to use more than you think, because you know, there's a lot of different little seasonings in here, so just adding a little bit of each of those. And I wanted a little more on this side. I guess this one could use a little more on the sides. Now, once I'm ready to flip it, I'm now going to add a little bit of butter. Not everyone wants to do that with their steak, but I find it does add a little bit of good flavor. Who doesn't like a little bit of butter on their food? Maybe I'm just American or something, but, you know... Um, throwing a little bit of butter on the top is going to make this pretty good. I'm using a spatula for this portion because I'm going to want to sort of rub it in a little bit. Rub it on the top and the sides a little bit. And we're going to flip these babies, which I can use a spatula for this time. And put a little butter on the other side. Oops.
Now, what I was going to note is some people will say you want about four or five minutes per side for a steak of this type, and that's mostly true, but I almost look for more somewhere around 10 minutes, counting a little bit of extra side time more than other people do. So I don't really need to measure how long it's on each side. You can tell. I'm not even really looking at the time. It, you can kind of tell when they're going to be good to go. Now, let's stir around our vegetables a bit. They still have some water cooking in there, evaporating a bit, but we're going to leave the lid on, even though it's keeping some of the water in, because we want these asparagi to be a little bit softer before we get them to other stages of the process. If the steak looks like it's done earlier, that is okay because it wants to rest. When you make the steak, you don't cut it right away. If you cut it right away, it's gonna leak a bunch of the juice out on the plate. But you wanna give it a second to rest. Now, the juice, when we have the steak, I'm gonna cook it like medium rare. So it's gonna have juice that some people think is blood, but it's not blood. It's called myoglobin. It's a protein. So when you see that even when I cook a really good steak, if I make it medium rare, it's gonna have some juice come out to a degree. It's not blood, just so you know, it's myoglobin. So, a little more time on the sides even. You see how the top and the bottom look like more than the sides. So, we're gonna take these off in a second. They're almost ready. Right now, they're only like half cooking because the amount of time I have one on the side and the other cooking, the one on the side is barely cooking the center and that one's fully cooking the center. And then when I switch, it does vice versa. So they're like half cooking during the time I'm doing this. So we're gonna have these ready to take off and rest in a moment. And you genuinely want them to rest for like at least five minutes, sometimes even 10. Uh, these are smaller-ish steaks, so we're, we'll cut them in like five minutes after they rest or something. But that's okay if the vegetables will take a moment longer because of that. Now I am going to remove the lid right now from those so that they can sort of steam off a little bit of that extra water without it all recollecting right there. All right. Now, everyone's tutorial on steak's different. It's like one of those things where I just made a really controversial episode about zero point infinite nines that I already know I'm not gonna be able to respond to all the comments that are gonna come in because there's gonna be a wide variety of opinions about if, when, or how zero point infinite nines can equal one. But this is another surprisingly controversial thing about how people like to cook their steak. And they're like, no, you gotta sous vide it. No, you gotta cook it on a barbecue. No, can't use butter. No, you can't put a little lime on right now. What I'm about to do, there's a little bit of lime that I'm gonna put a few drops on because I find that it gives it a nice little flavor that you don't taste it as much as you think. It just adds a tiny little nice kick. Now, the steak, it's controversial, but I get many compliments on my steak out of all the things I cook, so if you try my tutorial sometime, it might not do you wrong, but the thing is, you do have to learn the art of when they're ready. It takes a moment to get fully comfortable learning when these things are ready, because, I mean, if you're not picky, if you're okay having a wide range, it's not that hard to get it somewhere between medium and rare um, without having it too rare. But to get it like a perfect little medium rare can be a little harder. Now, I put a little bit of the grease back on because that is contains some of the meat juice. If you ever really want, you can try and collect this stuff in there, known as the fond, is what collects in the pan after you have 
meat or vegetables need the good residue. And there are ways to collect the fond, like uh, turn it into a broth or stuff, but we're not gonna collect it today. We just got some grease. Now these, I'm going to add some butter to because they have steamed a bit in the water and the water is pretty much gone. And so they're gonna burn if I just put them in the pan. But now we'll get them closer to their little, not quite crispy, but just like the outside having a good layer to it as well as the inside. And now I've stirred in a bit of butter and we're also gonna to toss in some of the rest of the seasonings that I had for the steak that we didn't need all of for the steak. So some of this seasoning we'll toss on there. In fact, yeah, the rest of the seasoning here will actually all be good. It was a good amount. Now, this will stir around a bit and we'll let that go at a low flame for a bit longer. Now, the meat's gonna rest before we're allowed to slice it and look at the inside. Sometimes a way, if you don't have a meat thermometer or whatever, the way I can tell if it's ready or not, I mean, not if it's ready, but the way I can tell if I cooked it to a good degree or not, turns out to be like, if I, how much juice I see leaking off it once I'm ready to cut it, because it leaks out like a medium amount of extra myoglobin when I cook it right. Not enough if I cook it too medium and too much if I cook it too rare. But this is probably going to be a good nice level. We'll check it when it's done resting. Now, these we have on that low flame with a little bit of butter they're frying in. And we'll let them go a bit longer before we take them off. And I will get them a plate or bowl to put on as well. Sometimes I also like to put a little lemon on the asparagus. You can put it on the mushroom or not. It's not like a goal to put it on the mushroom, but it doesn't hurt. I don't have the lemon ready, so I'm going to just put a tiny drop of the lime on these as well because lime is close enough to the lemon that it'll give a nice little kick to those. It's pretty important to put an acidic thing in the dish. People always remember the fats, but they don't always remember the acids. Now, if you don't eat meat, uh, you can make a meal that's just as proteiny if you cook this and then switch this for like tofu or beans or um, a few other things. If you need to make a cheaper meal, and you do like meat, you would probably want to go with chicken, which we can do a tutorial another day. Now, taking a quick peek at our comments. Thank you all for joining me. Super cool. Somebody asked, what's the quote on the wall? Oh, that's a, this is my family's kitchen. My mom writes random quotes once in a while. This is a quote that she wrote from Epictetus. Epictetus. I don't know how to pronounce his name. It is impossible for a man to learn what he thinks he already knows. Uh, it's an old school quote, so my mom writes random quotes on the wall. She's super cool. I love my mom. And now, let's see. Thank you all for joining me. And I'm going to take these off in a moment, so let's grab them a bowl. Or we've got a plate, is what I have for these fellas. And I think they're almost ready to take off, but they're not like burning or leaving too much sticking on the pan yet. And they're still doing cool stuff. So I'll leave them for a minute longer. Don't want the asparagus to get soggy or anything. The mushrooms usually only improve when you keep cooking them. The asparagus uh, gets to a point where you want to make sure you stop. Now, take those fellas off in a moment. Here, I gotta make some room. All right. So here's our vegetable dish, which we have created, which involves asparagus 
And mushrooms. And not just vegetables, because yeah, I always put mushrooms in with vegetables in my head, because that's like a cultural thing. But they're not, they're fungi. So this is our vegetable and fungi portion of our dish. Like I mentioned earlier, um, if I was making a meal off stream and I really wanted to have a full uh, meal, which maybe I'll even make this on my own later, but I didn't want to have that many pans and deal with the camera and stuff, I would make a starch or carb as well. I would probably make something like noodles. But today we got our vegetables and steak. And I'm going to create a little zone at the table where we are going to test these things out. Now, we're not going to do like a whole mukbang, uh, eat everything type thing. Uh, if I eat a bunch of stuff, it'll be for a funny challenge. It won't just be to watch me eat. That sounds boring. But you probably want to see me take a bite or two to test them out. So we will do that. Now, let's put this back. I mean, by back in the zone where we are prepping the spices. Now, creating a little zone. Oh my god, I almost forgot. Whoa, I forgot. We have the dragon fruit for dessert. We got white dragon fruit. So, I need to have a little station ready for that as well for my dragon fruit. Yeah. Okay. So, I'll create a little station. This will be ready in a moment. All right, so, folks ready to see what we cooked? This is the magnificent feast we cooked. So, and like I said, this is a fancier meal than I cook on the average day, but it still costs less than eating out all of this. I'm not even gonna eat all of this. I'm gonna, some of the steak I'm gonna give to my brother after. So, this is still, wait, let me shrink the camera. It got big because I was zooming in on a, a cooking process. This is still cheaper than one meal eating out. It costs as much as getting like a burger and fries. So cooking in can be good. Now, this looks quite delicious. So before I wrap up the stream, we're going to taste test it a little bit. And first we are going to try our vegetables real quick. See how these taste. This is the mushroom, not a vegetable technically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How about the asparagus? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, now I need a better knife. A better knife, not a butter knife. A butter knife would be the opposite of what I want. But now we are gonna go really close on this. When you cook, cut the meat, what's funny is it looks less red at first and then the redness like seeps into the slices afterward. Like, Cutting it adds pressure on them or something that prevents some of the redness. However, we will just see how this looks. Now, one thing is you're supposed to cut across the grain, but I'm not really good at identifying the grain. So sorry to any meat lover if I'm doing the grain part of the cutting wrong. Now, here we've gotten some delicious slices. Some people may like their meat, less rare, this is medium rare, but if you want it 
more medium. You just cook it for about a minute more per side. And then that'll give you your good more medium. Or you could cook it about a minute less per side if you want it even more red. Now, sometimes there's a little bit of fat on the end. You don't want, you know, sometimes I'll cut a little bit of that off. You don't want too much. There's good fat and bad fat. Some of the fats, just like you can tell, I'm going to be chewing on that. Some of the fats, like you can tell, that'll dissolve in my mouth. And if I'm allowed to handle the fat in my diet, that would be good. <laughs> this is a chew in my mouth bit, so I took it off. Now, this one was quite good. We're going to look inside the other steak as well, because I'm just going to cut them both and then share some with my brother after the stream. And see how this one is. I'm trying to guess what the grain is, what that means, you know. <laughs> Not great at the, uh, some. this is the bit where it's more controversial than you realize. So there's gonna be, if somebody really likes steak, they're gonna find things to criticize about my technique. But I would say this is a pretty dang good steak. Now, so, uh, this we will, in a moment, Take a nice little bite of. And like I said, we're not going to do like an insane eating video of just watching me eat. I'm just going to eat some and share some afterward. But we will take a bite of steak before we wrap up. And here we go. Little bite. Yum. Yum. Delicious. Now, we'll do further tutorials other days on different things you can cook. Today, I wanted to show you folks how I was going to make a nice dinner. Make sure that um, you also check out the main content I dropped this week, which I have more stuff ready to put out quite soon. But the mainest stuff is what goes on my combo class channel. And the newest one is a long episode. This is a second or third longest combo class episode yet. And the longest one of grade negative two so far. And that one will be quite fun to watch. So make sure you check that out linked in the description. And I hope you all have a great night or day. I'm going to wrap it up now so I can eat and such. But I wanted to just have a little chat and check in and tell you all a few cooking tips and that I love you all. So I will see you all in the future. And thank you. And I will join you in whatever the next 